Hi, uh, good afternoon everybody. This is uh, Ramanan. I'm the mission director for Atal Innovation Mission. Uh, it is a great privilege and a great opportunity to connect with you all on Facebook Live and I hope all of you can see me and hear me properly. Um, I just want to give you a little background on this entire innovation mission, Atal Innovation Mission, what it is trying to do and how all of you are going to become an integral part of this entire mission. Uh, the Atal Innovation Mission, the objective of the mission is to actually promote innovation and entre entrepreneurship throughout the country. We want to scale up at a rapidly huge level uh, across universities, across schools, across incubators, across startups, across the nation. We want to make sure that India is among the most innovative countries in the world. We want to be among the top in uh, the Global Innovation Index. And all of this actually starts off from the schools. You who are all either running schools or who are students at schools are going to be the future of the country. And in that context, creating an innovative mindset at the school level, right at the beginning from grade six to 11, when students become curious to know what is it that they are dealing with in this world, when new technologies that are emerging out in the, in the marketplace and in the landscape are making their presence felt, like uh, we have technologies like uh, computers, internet, uh, we have technologies like robotics, automation, big data analytics, we have technologies like 3D printing, which are all coming out. And most of the students in the schools hear about them, um, probably read about them, but very few of them get the opportunity to actually see what these technologies are about, get a very, very little chance to actually play around with them and tinker with them, as, as the word tinkering uh, means. Uh, to tinker with these technologies means you get a hands-on experience on these technologies and tools. And once you get to know about these tools, they help you to solve problems. India is a country with many challenges. Every one of you who is living in a particular city or studying in a particular school know the challenges around you, the challenges of uh, infrastructure, the challenges of housing, the challenges of water, sanitation, hygiene, the challenges of um, doing very well and getting jobs. Employment is a big challenge. Poverty elimination is a big challenge in the country. And then you have the technology challenge, challenges. Today we are having um, Technologies like self-driving cars, which are becoming obvious. Uh, we have technologies which are taking us out into space. Tesla has done tremendous amount of work in this area. We have a number of companies in the forefront of technologies which are trying to change the world. And we want the children in the schools to become part of that innovation drive across the world. So towards that end, Atal Innovation Mission has decided to ensure that every school has the potential to have a tinkering lab, an innovation tinkering lab, where technologies such as 3D printing or computer technology or, or um, electronic technologies or even science and um, math related technologies become available. And these schools, once they have these technologies or an innovation lab, they will be able to encourage the students to come, participate in projects, learn about it, tinker with it, respond to innovation challenges and tinkering challenges that we will be putting out periodically or the schools themselves can put out and thereby start creating a very creative man's mindset within the students. You know, a lot of us, like me included, uh, we all studied in schools where um, getting a rank was the most important thing for a student. Scoring marks in a subject was very important. A lot of it then translated to rote learning. And in the end, we never really got an idea of what we should do and how we should solve problems. If you see the world over, some of the best schools in the world, they actually give opportunities for children to work with technologies and solve problems themselves. Because the young mind is a very creative mind. It's a very innovative mind. But unless you give them the tools, they will not be able to perform or realize their full potential. So it is in that context that we are soliciting over 1,000 schools to be selected across the country to ensure that they are all equipped with 
these Atal tinkering labs. If a school is selected based on its application and we really require you to pay attention to the requirements of the application, we want you to get selected. We want more and more schools to come into the ambit of Atal Innovation uh, Mission. And once you're selected, the, there is a grant of 20 lakhs, which will be given to the school, so as to be able to acquire and procure the technologies related to the labs. Once these are operational, on a yearly basis, we will be releasing for the next five years, 10 lakhs, five, two lakhs per year, to ensure that these innovation labs sustain and continue to grow and attract more students. We will be also organizing number of challenges which will stimulate the thinking for the students. So students will be very interested in working on projects. We want to expose them to new, newer and newer uh, challenges in the, uh, out in the world as well as in our own country. And we will also identify schools which have responded to the challenge well. They will get recognitions. They will get opportunities to present themselves and the students from here will also get different forms of recognition from different institutions across the country. There is a tremendous interest by corporates uh, in, uh, who have expressed to me that they would be interested in being part of this entire um, innovation uh, mission. And they would do it by actively adopting schools so that the technologies, you need teachers to be trained, you need the students to be trained on the technologies, and you need uh, a lot of hand-holding by experts in the field. So we are going to facilitate all of that. So the Atal Innovation Mission is not just going to focus on uh, making sure that you will get a lab and you will just get the technologies, but you will be also able to use it. You have the right mentors, you have the right teachers, you have the right network, you have the right institutions helping you, you have the right challenges being posed, you have the right competitions being organized. All of this will make sure that there is a holistic approach towards innovation. Now I want to mention that we are looking at schools all across the country, which means government schools, private schools, uh, schools from uh, the hilly districts and the remote areas of the country, because innovation has no boundaries. Uh, students from any part of the country can do extremely well if they get the chance. And we want to enable that chance. We want to enable that opportunity. And that is why these thousand, we have already selected 457 schools uh, to those of you who had applied earlier, this is the second round of applications which is going out. And in this round of applications, we'll be selecting a thousand more schools. And we'll do a little more, much more than that as we scale up the operation. So this is in summary what um, Atal Innovation uh, Missions, Atal Tinkering Labs is all about. Now I just want to wrap it up before I take some questions. Um, we are also having another initiative for Atal incubators, and these incubators are going to be hosting startups. So they'll be associated with colleges. So the next step, as students move from school to college level, they will continue to have an opportunity to then use the ideas and use the creative abilities that they learned in the schools and apply them in colleges through these incubators, get associated with startups, and make sure that they have the full potential to be able to realize their creative capabilities and their innovative capabilities through products that will be launched out into the market. So it is not just the Atal Innovation Mission, it is not just to ensure that you will have uh, access to innovation and innovative technologies in schools, but it is a holistic approach towards creating an ecosystem of innovation in the country. And that ecosystem of innovation is going to be further accelerated and amplified through support to incubators in the country, which will host startups, and we'll be hosting a number of challenges which will also stimulate uh, the creative abilities of various students, as well as uh, professionals in the, in, the, in the country. So with that, I am um, open to questions. I have already started receiving uh, questions. Um, From Varun Mahajan, um, how many labs AIM is setting up in government schools? So we have, um, we want to make sure that there is an equitable distribution of uh, schools 
selected by the uh, Adil uh, Innovation Mission for the Tinkering Labs. So we urge that every government school applies for it. Uh, that is a criteria, and the criteria has been very clearly laid down in, uh, in the application uh, based on where the selection will be made. But we are very conscious of the fact that this, these tinkering labs should be in schools in various districts. Ideally, the vision is that in every district, in every school, they should have a tinkering lab. But we are starting off right now with selecting 1,000. We have already selected 500. And we will go on to select more schools. And so whether it is a government school or a private school, whether it is um, um, associated with uh, a remote area or whether it is in a metro, uh, we are very keen that schools from all over apply for this. And uh, based on the application and based upon the, at the end of the day, what we are looking for are two things. One, is there a commitment and a passion from the school to apply for this? And second, how are they going to ensure that the Techno the investment that is being made in this technology lab is going to be utilized properly. So the utilization of that means very active engagement by the, by the school head, by the teachers, by the mentors who get associated, and the surrounding schools. We want, if, if, if for example, your school gets selected um, for an Atal Tinkering Lab, we would greatly encourage you to invite other schools also to leverage the benefits that that lab is giving in some manner. Uh, you can organize visits so that the children from all the neighboring schools, maybe five or six surrounding schools, can get the benefit of uh, this technology uh, investment that is being made by the government. The next question I have is, who will mentor the students in these schools? Vipul Dinodia. Uh, Vipul, uh, the men we are going to be, we are actually launching a very big um, mentor program. Um, there are a number of corporates and professionals in the, uh, not only from the uh, uh, corporate bodies, but also from academic institutions uh, who are very interested in mentoring. And uh, we want to make sure that every school has uh, a couple of mentors, at least four or five mentors who can come on different days of the week and they take interest. We want to identify these mentors who have the capability, who have the knowledge, who have the passion, and who have the commitment. So these will be professionals. Uh, there will be a process of uh, identifying and, and shortlisting them and making them known to all the schools. I have a question from uh, Shashi Kumar. When will you provide orientation programs for ATL um, in what is that? In charges. In charges. Yeah, I, I think this is a very important point. Uh, what you need to do is, we just don't want to just uh, launch these labs and then sit down and hope that things will happen. We are going to take an active interest in training, uh, not only the teachers, because they need to know how to use these technologies and how to run sessions, uh, innovation sessions here. So we are going to make sure that uh, there is immediately a training program a lot of the training will be made available for you online so that you don't have to, we don't have to wait for a cluster and a teacher to teach you. There will be a lot of online materials, there will be video uh, materials that will be put on, the, on our site uh, and in the Atal Tinkering Labs. So you have access to them and uh, almost immediately once the installation happens, we are going to be uh, installing all of that. Uh, there is a July to October uh, time frame in which uh, formal training has been planned and that will be launched uh, in July so you will hear more about it from our both from our website as well as uh, anybody who wants to know you can call uh, at the help desk provided and all of this will be provided to you. Uh, I got, I've got another uh, question from Nikhil Bharadwaj. Can schools with small building be part of uh, the Atal Innovation Mission? Um, we have given some space requirements, some minimal space requirements for this. And I think that space requirement is, is something that you should have or should be enabled by your school uh, without which the lab uh, will not be you know, optimally utilized and will be beneficial. So, those, uh, so the small building, yes, maybe a couple of schools around together can even make an application. Uh, we uh, would encourage that a school which is applying for um, this uh, tinkering lab also maybe identifies other schools whom they can support because they have the space. So if a particular school is interested, it doesn't have the required space, 
please talk to some of the surrounding schools and find out which of them will be able to support you better and that way that application will actually get more priority from us because uh, there is a cluster of schools who are intending to use uh, the labs. Um, I have a question from Gagan Preet. Gagan has asked what exactly will the labs enable the children to innovate? Um, it's a very good question, Gagan. What do we innovate on? First of all, you have to have an innovative mindset. To have an innovative mindset, you need to be able to get familiar with what are the problems facing us. There are small challenges, there are big challenges, there are small problems, there are big problems. Uh, these problems are what are demanding a solution. Now take for example, um, affordable housing. The Prime Minister has said we want affordable housing. Now a lot of things go towards affordable housing. The material that you use uh, to construct a house, the, the cost at which you construct a house, uh, the uh, uh, various recurring expenses that go towards uh, constructing a house. Now these are challenges which affordable housing has. And we need to be able to solve the problem. So to solve the problem, many of these technologies like 3D printing or robotics or automation or material sciences or uh, um, uh, analytics, these are all very relevant to solving the problems. So the innovation lab will familiarize you with problems, uh, will familiarize you with technologies used to solve the problems, will familiarize you with some of the background information that you need before you can start solving the problem. So that is the whole idea. And then uh, it is up to the students to form groups. Projects can be identified, groups can be created, and these groups can creatively address a problem and solve a problem. So for example, uh, recently, as I, as I know, Intel had organized a science fair in the United States, and 20 students from India got selected based upon their performance in, in the various competitions that were held before. The problem statement was given, uh, the challenge was thrown, uh, the students responded, and I, uh, 20 of them got selected. They went to California. They uh, made a presentation there. And uh, I understand that some of the students have planets named after them as a formal recognition. Now, this is a fantastic thing to have from India students get whose, uh, whose names are now um, in the planetary system. And that is, uh, that is something that uh, any, which will not affect, I mean, every, every parent of that child will be so proud and every school will be so proud and the student himself is spurring them to do many other things. So that's the sort of innovation that we are looking for and that can spur them on to do many other things. Um, I have a question from um, Neelakantan Dayakar. What age group of students can participate in Athal Tinkering Labs? Uh, we are encouraging all students from grade 6 to grade 11 or 12 uh, to participate in this because uh, they get the necessary, at least minimal education that is required to start tinkering with the technologies. Uh, of course, uh, age is never a barrier in terms of innovative thinking. I know many students, uh, many of you are very smart and pick up technologies very fast. And the modern, uh, the, the youth of the current generation are extremely um, savvy. Uh, they are savvy, internet savvy, and you know how to surf and and see so many things um, and find out, discover things for yourself. So I personally, I don't think age is a constraint, uh, but we have restricted this to grade six to grade 11. And we want schools with a certain minimal number of students in these, uh, um, in these classes to participate so that uh, the tinkering lab is leveraged very effectively. Um, Rachna has asked, is the ATL curriculum part of school curriculum or is it extracurricular? Um, Rachna, you asked, uh, you asked and you have triggered a very uh, interesting uh, thing that I wanted to share. This is one of the most disruptive initiatives in schools um, where the government is playing an important role. Now, why is it disruptive? We are not, this is not a substitute for your curriculum. Your curriculum stands. Whatever curriculum you have, stands and you have to perform in school according to the curriculum and, and none of that is getting changed. What is getting added to this is the ability for you to actually get familiar and tinker with technologies that is relevant to today and which is relevant for the future. This world is moving towards a smart future. Things are changing rapidly across the landscape. Uh, companies which were not there 
10 years earlier are now some of the biggest companies in the world. Take Amazon, or take Facebook, or take Google, or take um, uh, Tesla, or take um, uh, Uber. They have all revolutionized the way the world is working today. Uh, the way people engage with each other and communicate with each other, the way things are bought and sold, the way transportation is happening. ISRO, for example, has launched a satellite, uh, has launched a vehicle which can launch 104 satellites, and which, which did that. And, um, and they did it at a fraction of the cost that uh, the others have um, uh, in, in the US or in Australia have, have spent. And that's a fantastic achievement. So um, you need to get familiar with them. And so this will be extracurricular for you. But we are hoping that the students will start using the tinkering labs to boost their own performance in the standard curriculum which is there. And it will happen. Uh, it has to happen because once you get familiar with these technologies, uh, your mind races very fast in terms of how to apply them, your knowledge level increases, your ability to absorb the current curriculum and relate to it becomes very, very good. So I think uh, this will be a, a fantastic addition to your ex existing curriculum. Can we select mentors for our schools in which um, languages will the mentors teach Subrat Kumar? Uh, Subrat, very good question. Uh, we uh, would love you to uh, be able to identify mentors. If you, are, if you know existing mentors um, who, uh, who are familiar with um, your school and you know people who, are, who would like to be mentors, uh, you should uh, be able to at least let us know that these people would like to be mentors. But we are going to not wait for you to select mentors. We are going to proactively find mentors and identify mentors. Uh, and at the end of the day, the mentor has to relate to you and you, you, would, you should like to work with, with him or her and she, should, she or he should like to work with you. So this is a mutual uh, communication and chemistry which has to build up over a period of time. Uh, we are going to be finding the right mentors, but it is also for the students to be able to leverage these mentors leverage their time very effectively, leverage their knowledge very effectively, and, and both of you will have a great role to play in making this entire thing work. Uh, languages, yes, uh, I think that is an important point. Uh, we are going to find mentors uh, who have proficiency in multiple languages, especially in particular states where uh, certain languages uh, are more dominant in, in some of the schools. Uh, we would ideally like to have men mentors who are familiar with multiple languages, both English and the uh, language um, in, uh, in the school, so that uh, the knowledge level uh, is, is better um, expressed uh, through the language that the students are most comfortable with. Is government providing full funding for the labs, or is it government-aided or self-finance? Niranjan Kekuda. Kekude. Niranjan. Um, Government is going to be funding, as I mentioned, and it's, as is clear in the application, 20 lakhs, uh, 10 lakhs initially in the first grant, and 10 lakhs over a uh, five-year period, uh, 2 lakhs every, every um, uh, year. And that's the current plan. Uh, however, we do expect, as your school uh, has, has more and more corporates and mentors get familiar with your school, there may be other uh, people who may be willing to invest in the school. The corporates may be willing to uh, invest in the school. We are not against any of that. Whoever is uh, ready to finance you in addition to what the government is financing uh, is fine. And, and that is acceptable. Um, we do expect that the schools, over a period of time, see the advantage of this and start allocating funds proactively towards the tinkering lab. Because this is going to create the better quality of the students. Uh, is going to be, uh, you know, imagine if there is a Nobel Prize winner coming from your school because of the tinkering lab. I mean, what a great thing it will be for the school. That school will shoot into great fame uh, all across the world. So we hope we are going to create some Nobel Prize winners at some point in time from one of your schools. Are all states eligible for ATL when they are ready? Yes, all states are eligible. All the schools are eligible. Uh, all districts are eligible. It is a very we, we are encouraging everyone to apply. Um, we, please take the application seriously. Uh, please take this application um, with commitment and passion at the highest levels from the schools to make it happen. And if you do that, uh, that's going to be uh, the best thing that will happen to your school and, and it will be a great success. 
Sanjay Kumar has asked this question. We need some training on how to use these tinkering labs. Absolutely, training is crucial. If you don't know how to use the lab effectively, then the purpose of the lab would be lost. We want to make sure that there is training being given at various levels to the students, to the teachers, to the mentors, uh, to uh, anyone who is, to even the providers of the technologies who are coming because we want them to make sure that necessary um, insulation and help in the utilization or maintenance of this uh, is happening. So there's going to be a lot of focus on training. Uh, most of the training we want uh, it to be given through online medium, uh, through real-time uh, interactions. Um, at the same time, I'm sure there will be uh, training programs uh, which the mentors will organize or the schools will also organize uh, to ensure that the students get familiar with all the technologies. Is it mandatory for a school to involve all children from class 6 to class 12 in these labs? Manish Banga. Well, the idea is for all the children to get exposed. And those who are interested sufficiently should start leveraging it. Um, but obviously, unless you expose something to every child, they will not even know what is in it for them. And they will not know how to leverage it. So we would encourage, once you have the tinkering lab, to ensure that all the children get an exposure to what is happening there, what this lab is all about, why this lab is in place, and why is it in existence. What is it that uh, the, the larger motive of being innovative, being creative, being having the ability to create your own solution to problems that are there in the world, challenges that are there in the world, or opportunities that are there in the world. Everything need not be a problem. You can maybe create something new, which nobody had envisaged earlier, and uh, that's an opportunity. So we want students to start thinking of how we can solve problems rather than just learn something and, and put it out on your answer paper. That is, that is not uh, enough of education. Actually, a lot of education is dealing with reality and real technologies and real issues and real problems. And we want to stimulate such thinking and we want to stimulate the creative abilities of all the students. How will schools in remote villages be eligible for ATL? Subhajit Sena. So uh, actually we have, uh, in fact, if you see on our website, uh, one of the schools from Andaman, uh, has Port Blair, has already been selected and uh, a video on that school is, is already there or by that school is already there. So uh, don't worry about how remote your school is. Every school is eligible. We will make sure that the technology, uh, the tinkering lab is established there that the tools and technologies are available. What we need the school, however, is to provide the space and show the interest and the commitment from their side and show how they are going to fulfill that commitment from their side. So that is the application is very important uh, in being able to express that and, and share that with us so that we are able to see that interest, see the commitment, and see the ability of the school to do justice to this 20 lakhs that is being expended by the government for every school that is selected. And it's not a small amount, but the amount is not as important as the fact that you need to ensure that the children of the school and the students of the school can actually leverage it and become innovative and become very creative. Will Niti Aayog provide curriculum to this uh, work, uh, Manish Banga? Uh, yeah, we will be providing you standard templates. We are providing you a methodology uh, and many other things. But we don't want to limit uh, the school's functioning in, uh, in any manner. Uh, in the, or, or the creative way in which the school is going to stimulate thinking using this uh, tinkering labs. So we want, uh, we want schools to actually think very creatively. And, and uh, the other thing we will do is if we find some school doing some stuff very creatively and leveraging this tinkering labs most effectively, we will actually share it on the net. We will have them come and present. Uh, maybe we'll have a Facebook live session with the, with the faculty uh, who are running that uh, tinkering lab, with the principal, with the students. Uh, we want to give them every opportunity to showcase whatever they are doing, to get recognition for what they are doing, uh, to be able to express and to be able to receive ideas from others. So we uh, will have a very, very proactive uh, reach out program as well as a reach in program from, from your side to ensure that uh, best practices are shared.
and, um, and the students benefit. How will you motivate parents to let their children participate in ATL? Anil, Anil, Anil Sharma. Well, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, parents, um, first, you know, there is a parent education also which is required and I think you brought a very important point. A parent should know what this tinkering lab is all about because many people are not familiar with tinkering lab and they'll think that you're tinkering with uh, some other toy or something like that. So we want to make sure that you are, they know that you are dealing with technologies which are modern, which are relevant, and which can be used to solve multiple problems. The problems could be in any space. The problem need not be a technology-related problem. The problem could be in water sector, it could be in infrastructure, it could be in biosciences, it could be in genetics, it could be in uh, um, healthcare, it could be in education, uh, it could be in rocket science. You know, the problems are, are all uh, at different levels. What we need from you uh, is to tell your parents what is happening. So that is one part of the communication that should go on. Uh, we hope that teachers will call the parents in a parent session, parent-teacher session to educate them about whatever is happening in the Atal Tinkering Labs. And we will also make a proactive outreach to parents when um, through, through materials that we can uh, send or communicate with them. Having a number of questions, I'm glad to see the interest in, in this entire uh, um, Facebook session. What is the process of applying online or offline? Uh, the process is online, everything is online. Yes. And so we have made it very easy. So please uh, log on to the website, Niti IO website. You can, um, it, uh, you will get access to it. It's a very simple, uh, straightforward application. It can be done very easily. But I would, I would also require schools um, uh, and principals particularly to ensure that all the relevant documentation is made ready and available for us to be able to process the application speedily and select your school. Uh, very often we find there is uh, interest, but there is no um, follow-up from your side. We want active follow-up from your side because if you don't follow up, then some other school will get selected and then you'll be wondering why my school didn't get selected. So. We request the students also who are interested to make sure that um, they let their uh, uh, school heads know about the time frames in which we are expecting the applications and the time frame in which we want to take the decisions and, and start the tinkering labs in your schools. Will there be less work in winter or summer holidays, Sangeeta Agarwal? Well, this is not, this is not work. Will, labs work? Huh? Will, Will there the be labs less? Work? Oh, Will, the the, labs work will these labs work? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood. Will these labs work in winter and summer holidays? Um, we want these labs to be utilized to their best. So we would really urge us, the schools to keep them open and run them during um, the holidays, even on weekends, because interest can come from anywhere. This is not a compulsory thing. It is a very voluntary thing. And we want, uh, we are sure that students will get very interested and they would like to spend some of their time Instead of going for a movie, they may want to come and spend time in the tinkering lab. And that would be one of our biggest measure of successes if, if it happens. But um, um, yes, uh, we are not mandating anything on this. Uh, it is up to the school uh, to keep it open or closed at uh, whatever times. Uh, but we would expect that the schools will leverage this uh, facility uh, to the maximum and to allow students to have access to it. Uh, create projects, fun projects, create challenging projects, create competitions, um, create uh, knowledge sharing sessions, um, create mentoring uh, and training sessions. It, this, is, this is a place where uh, you're not going to be tested for anything. This is not a place where you come and give an examination. This is a place where you let your creative thoughts run and create something. So we want the students to do that and uh, it's, it's a fantastic thing, you know, uh, always when you have a homework to do, you, you're never happy. But here, it is you who will be defining your own homework. So that's the sort of activity that we all hope that you will be involved in. Won't parents be paranoid about children not using their time for mainstream education? Well, um, par parents are normally paranoid on anything. So, I <laughs> so I'm not uh, too concerned about parents uh, getting paranoid, but uh, it is important that you don't say you're going to this tinkering lab and go somewhere else. Uh, 
uh, if you're using the tinkering lab for what it is meant, I'm sure you will find that you're going to do much better in your school itself. I mean, I don't see these two unrelated. I, I, I do understand that sometimes uh, your interest in the tinkering lab may uh, make you spend more time, but please don't compromise on what you need to do to graduate from school or to graduate from college. These are all very important things. Um, the more you educate yourself, the better. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that this is not going to affect you in any way. It's going to actually add to your uh, thinking ability, to your problem solving abilities, uh, to your ability to deal with life later on and, and to deal with the challenges and to, de to grow a, in, a, in a manner that is, you know, you're not just being an ordinary guy, you're being an innovative guy. So you want to make sure that you fall into that bracket of, of people. Can multiple schools use one tinkering lab? Uh, yes, you could. We, are, we encourage that because we know that not all the schools will get a tinkering lab. And we would greatly encourage uh, any school to involve neighboring schools uh, and, and uh, when, when they apply, if they say that these are the four or five schools whom we are planning to uh, allow leverage to our tinkering lab, that would be great. And that would actually go positively towards your application. Um, this is Sahid. Yeah, Sahid Chaudhary. Sahid Chaudhary, is STEM uh, learning the best way to integrate innovation in daily curriculum? I guess STEM has become very, very important. If you see all over the world, science, technology, um, and uh, uh, mathematics, uh, these are all becoming very, very important. And um, STEM learning is, you know, Innovation is all about solving a problem, uh, coming up with a new way of solving a problem. The problem can be small, it could be big. When you innovate, you're coming up with a new way of solving that particular problem. Now, in order to solve the problem, and the problem could be in any sphere, you use technology, you use science, you use tools, uh, you use math, uh, you use uh, various um, uh, ex expertise on subjects, in order to solve the problem. And the tinkering lab, and the more you are familiar, I mean, look for example today, the mobile phone or the internet. Uh, what a powerful tool it has become for you, whether you are a commerce student, whether you are an art student, whether you are a uh, life sciences student, or whether you are a technology uh, engineering student. If you don't have access to a computer, you are really uh, cutting yourself off from the rest of the world and you're cutting yourself off from so much of information. So that is, and the more you get familiar with technology, the more you'll see how you can use it. Uh, if you are not familiar with 3D printing, which is now becoming very, very uh, prominent in, in most of the uh, manufacturing sector, then you sort of lose out because these technologies help you to reduce the time in which you can design, you can develop, you can manufacture, you can prototype, and you are able to, and you're not reinventing the wheel all the time. So that is the whole uh, purpose, to use the technologies, to use the tools for you to pole vault into new ways of solving problems. And that's, that's the whole idea. Uh, Viraj, Viraj Gandhi has, how can we involve national and international experts in ATL? How can experts volunteer for ATL? Um, we, we do want uh, in fact, we are ourselves doing a tremendous amount of education to the corporates. Uh, one of my main responsibilities, in addition to whatever we are doing here, is to ensure that the world comes to know what we are doing in the Atal Tinkering Labs and the Atal you know, um, Incubation Centers. The Atal Innovation Mission, as I said, is one of the, um, one of the unique, uh, innovative, and disruptive approaches towards innovation anywhere in the world. Uh, we are talking about thousands and thousands of schools getting integrated into creating an innovative mindset. We are talking about creating an ecosystem of mentors, incubators, startups, who are all going to reinforce each other and help each other rather than working in silos. So this is our aim. And with that, uh, clearly you need both international and national experts to become part of this entire thing. And we are going to be doing that. Uh, we are going to launch uh, Mentor India in the next few weeks. You will hear more about this. We will also have um, some online sessions and Facebook type sessions for all of this. 
but mentor india is going to create a network of mentors for the atal tinkering labs as well as for the uh, atal incubation centers uh, we want thousands of mentors to volunteer uh, if your parent is an expert or a technology uh, expert or or any expert please tell them about this program and we would like them to volunteer as mentors and uh, we would like them to mentor the school um, where either you are studying or the neighboring schools we don't you know we we really want um, everyone who has studied and educated and and has become a specialist in some particular field we want that knowledge to be disseminated to uh, the youth of our country and so we would encourage very much uh, so you can experts can volunteer for atl and if you know somebody uh, who you feel should volunteer please do that how do we approach mentors appointed by niti ayog um we will identify the mentors associated with particular schools so you will get to know about them and they will probably come to your schools and and they will be physically present in the uh, in the atl labs that we are setting up uh, they will you will have opportunities to directly interact with them so we'll create a, we have already um, define the process so it should not be a problem of uh, you being able to approach the mentors or they uh, being available to you uh, we will of course uh, they may they may come on particular days of the week or during certain times of the week so they will make it known to your school so that you can leverage their time most effectively what is the approach behind selecting schools colleges um, for atl ved prakash uh, the approach is very simple the online application uh, has to be filled it has to be filled very well um, please make sure that your school fills their application takes interest in it and gives a quality application and the requirements are very clearly stated and once you have done that you will be um, you will be eligible for this and um, also i want everyone to know that we are scaling up so we had 457 schools which we identified now in the next round we are selecting 1000 schools if this is successful we would ideally want to scale up to 5000 schools or even more um, so the number is not as important as it being a true success so it is important for every one of you who is part of this and who is using an atal tinkering lab please make it a success because if you don't make it a success then the scaling doesn't happen you know the feedback is negative and and it can go into a reverse direction and we don't want that we want it to be a great success so for that you also have to play a very important role as will the government and as will the mentors and all the network that is surrounding it uh kutumba reddy we have set up the new we have set up a new school last year at a remote village and it's our second year running successfully um just to just to, to know are we eligible for atl uh, please um, go through the application uh, put in your application um the application clearly says uh, eligibility criteria um and uh, if you are if you find that you are not eligible uh, see if you can pair up with another school which is eligible so that you are uh, having a chance to you know three or four schools together and you may become eligible um and we are constantly seeing and refining the ways in which we can select schools but we want to make sure that if you are setting up a lab there is a minimal number of students there is a minimal number of faculty who are interested and who will be committed and we have the minimum amount of space that is required to set a meaningful constructive lab so that is these are very important factors but beyond that i think it is the passion and the interest that the school shows and um, to be able to respond to this application and we will select uh, appropriately how do you think we can involve students aspiring for say medical background or commerce in this lab uh, once again as i said these technologies do not inhibit you from uh, whether you are interested in commerce or science in fact they will help you and aid you now if you take commerce e-commerce has become a very big thing uh, throughout the world and you know everybody is talking of digital payments uh, digital uh, transactions uh, most of you are already shopping in, on amazon and on flipkart and so on and so commerce and these technologies are very related whatever technologies will be there in the tinkering lab uh, there are concepts uh, like um, automation and robotics which become very important in uh, let us say a medical profession and um, yeah, you know there is a whole lot of 
medical electronics that is happening, uh, which is changing um, the way uh, diagnosis is done, the way um, uh, electronic um, uh, parts uh, can be used uh, or electronic implants are used in, in the human body today. Uh, there is study of gen genome technology and there is genetic uh, DNA uh, sequencing and all of that stuff. And you need all these technologies, you need to understand these technologies and leverage these technologies for understanding these challenges better. So, uh, yes, the simple answer to your question is students aspiring for any medical background or commerce would find this lab very, very useful and, and uh, relevant. We invite local maker spaces to be part of this. Okay. So, uh, I, I just want to add that um, we are very, we are very interested in not just the schools, but even uh, um, you know uh, other institutions around our local maker spaces to be part of this uh, mission. Uh, we want them to support ATL and schools. Uh, they can conduct idea thons. Um, they can help in providing mentors or identifying mentors. So we want not just the institution itself, but if the institution is related to uh, others around uh, who have been helping the school, you know, we have to spread the message around because they can start playing an important role in the evolution of the tinkering lab and the success of the tinkering lab. Uh, we propose to host a number of challenges. There will be school of the month challenge. There will be other challenge, challenge and competitions that we will introduce. And awards will be given to the best students, uh, to the best schools. Um, training and curriculum all are going to be provided. And um, we, want to, we want every one of you who is on this uh, call to understand that this is a great transformation initiative. It is transforming the way education is being imparted to our students in India. It is transforming the capability of that students have into real problem solving ability. It is innovation that is being triggered in the mindset of the people, of the youth, of the students. And this innovation mindset is going to help uh, the country. It will first, first of all, it will help you personally. It's going to help your family. It's going to help the company that you're going to work for and it's going to help the country at a, on a, at a larger level, the nation at a larger level. And some of you are going to solve world problems, so it's going to help the world at some level. So don't underestimate either yourself or your potential to be able to leverage this tinkering lab for the benefit of the world. You are the agents for changing this world. And I'm sure every one of you will play a very important part in it. Thank you everyone for joining this call. Um, do log on to the Niti Aayog website. Uh, you have the Twitter account uh, um, at aim to innovate and you have at Niti Aayog and uh, you have YouTube and you have my uh, Twitter account too, R Ramanan. Um, feel free to uh, communicate with me anytime. Uh, it has been a fantastic experience talking to you all. I hope I get a chance to see you all during my various visits to uh, various parts of the country and to your school in particular. All the very best.